it's time for the Nano Edge. So please open the Nano Edge. This is the Nano Edge Studio. We are uh, we, we are going to create anomaly detection project. So then press please press the anomaly detection brick. And then press create new project option. And the first step you have six steps. So uh, you would need to be really creative to to be lost. Uh, this is an advantage of Nano Edge Studio that the workflow is very clear. So we are within the first step, a project configuration, and we need to add the project name, of course, any name you want. Then some description. Then we need to select target hardware, but fortunately the default setting is relevant one. So it is our board STB. Then the next step is to select a sensor. Uh, we have combination of accelerometer and gy gyroscope. So there is not such a sensor, but fortunately there is a generic sensor. And we have three axes of acceleration, three axes of the gyroscope. So in total, we have six axes. So please set the relevant number of the axes within the number of axes uh, area. This is important to be careful here. So generic sensor, six axes. And then proposed maximum size of RAM is OK. And also let's keep no flash limit. We are quite rich today. One megabyte of flash and 640 kilobytes of RAM. So the project is configured. The name, the description, the target hardware, STV board, generic sensor, six access. And the default settings of the resources. So we can press save and next. And now it's a time for fitness activity because we need to collect signals. The first stage of the signal collection, it is to add regular signals. So as you remember, linear movement. Please press the add signal, then from serial as a source, and then select the right comport number you can use for that the device manager or or you can use a terminal for example on my site it is terra term new connection serial and i can see that my com port it is com12 st microelectronics virtual com port so cancel close com12 then let's define the number of signals to be acquired. Please enter 21. And we are ready for data collection. Now the only action on our site is to start data collection and of course mimic the linear movement because we are collecting data for regular condition. So be careful now. Once again, I will show you. Start, select the, the, the reference points and move the board. Let's say three movements within the two and a half second, like I'm showing you the USB on the top. And we need 20 signals. However, I ask you to enter 21 because I expect the first signal will be impacted by the start condition. So we will, we will delay it this first one. So I'm starting data collection. And now immediately I'm starting to move my board. And you see three periods of the sinusoida means three atomic movements within two and a half uh, seconds. 
and please be careful and mimic really linear movement. Please observe the counter on the right side, number of lines, until it reaches 21 and it stops automatically. So I hope activity will wake you up. I'm sure. OK, I'm done. So one, two, three movements. And now let's do the checkpoint because we need to delay the first line. So now let's check the first line and delay it because we expect it is impacted by the start condition. And now we are ready for import. So after import, you can see uh, the curves uh, axis wise, both in time domain and in frequency domain. And the, the curve represents average data over the uh, all the lines collected, all the signals collected. So that's why on the X axis you can see uh, numbers up to 127 because we collected uh, 128 samples, but having in mind that the number of the axis is six, we have 128 multiplied by six, what gives 768 values. So number of values per line you can see here is 768. And the number of number of lines, number of signals or buffers in the repository is 20 because we just delayed the, the first one as impacted by start condition. The basic the checks uh, equivalent of the errors for the compiler are uh, OK. The optional checks we can perform. This is not mandatory. It is also OK. So we are ready to collect abnormal data. OK, for abnormal signals, the procedure is exactly the same. So add signal from serial. Select the same comport number, but now you can select, you can put here 20 signals because the first signal will be not impacted by start condition because as a first signal, uh, as a first five signals, we want to collect static position, steady position of the board like that. And then after observe the, the, the counter, when the counter reaches five, then take your board and start parabolic movement. So once again, static position, five signals collected, then take your board and mimic the parabolic movement until the end of data collection. So I'm starting. One. I'm ready. Two. Three. Four, five, and parabolic movement until the end. And keep the significant amplitude. And you should see similar plot. Okay, I'm done. So I can continue. 
and now no need to delay the first line, just import data. And the GUI is exactly the same. The only difference is, is color, because for abnormal signals, the color of the plots of the curves is red. We can jump into the most important or the core activity of the Nano Edge Studio, what means selection of the model and parameterization of the model. So now we let automatic data scientist to, to do his job. I'm selecting brick number four and pressing run new benchmark. Then I can review the diff, the, the, the axis wise, the regular and abnormal signals. They are definitely different. Fortunately, they are different for each axis, so I can start. And it should take, I don't know, about five minutes, but it depends on the uh, on the instance, on the trial, on your site, because uh, the input data ser set is sliced into chunks, then the chunks are mixed up randomly Uh, so this is not deterministic process. Uh, it should converge to the same results, but it is not deterministic. And now, the, some explanation. Blue balls or blue dots stands for normal signals. The red balls stands for abnormal signals. And the point is to achieve as long as possible distance between blue and red dots. The dotted line, it is our uh, decision boundary. It is uh, on the level of 90% of similarity, because similarity in wording of Nano Edge Studio stands for the distance between the blue and red. Uh, so, uh, the ideal uh, result is when all the red points are behind the, the dotted line and they are as far as possible from the blue points. Regarding uh, the benchmark uh, indicators, here you can see the score and this is primary indicator and this is combination of the secondary indicators and the secondary indicators it is balanced accuracy resources usage and also the the, the functional margin so balanced accuracy it is the ability of the library to correctly identify regular signals as a regular ones and abnormal as abnormal ones 100% means that the, all the signals has been properly classified to the right class. The resources usage, I think, is quite obvious for you. It is just the usage of RAM and flash. The functional margin maybe is not clear. Uh, the functional margin, it is the area between the closest abnormal signal and the closest regular signal. So for example, between this point and this point. So this is the rectangle here. And of course, the wider functional margin, the better scoring, the better model behavior. So I can see quite good numbers uh, on my side, balance accuracy 100% and score is very close to the 100%. The resources usage is also also acceptable. Uh, I will wait, let's say, until uh, four minutes.
here you can see the time of the evaluation. Okay, I can stop. You can also stop if you can see good numbers. First of all, 100% balanced accuracy. Of course, I could wait longer to achieve uh, better distance between the uh, regular and abnormal signals to achieve better functional margin. In practice, I think after seven, maybe 10 minutes, uh, I would achieve much better uh, results. But nevertheless, the results are quite good after four minutes. And practical hint for you, if you would have mixed uh, the good signal with bad signal collecting normal signals or vice versa, the model will be confused. Let's stop the benchmarking stage. Just short hint for you. Here you can see results and the number of libraries uh, which uh, have been found by the tool. We have a winner, we have a model name, but you can select alternative library. On my side, I would keep a winner. However, I know from my experience that the MML model usually behaves better. So just in case of bad behavior, we can come back to this point and select alternative model. And you can select alternative model by double clicking on the, by clicking on the line and confirming. But I'm not going to confirm. And now let's validate our model within emulator stage. So please select the brick number five, then press the initialize emulator. Then select from serial. Select your COM port, so exactly the same as for data collection, but now please enter here. 10 signals. And what, what we are doing now? It is important to, to catch. This is anomaly detection algorithm capable to learn on the target. So what is the first activity for the newborn child? We need to send the child to the school. So now it is the learning stage. And we want to. Uh, we don't want to overload our our child, so we uh, provide only 10 lessons. 10 iterations of learning, and this is, by the way, minimal value. And now please be very quick when starting the movement. During learning stage for anomaly detection project, we need to present normal behavior, so we need to show to the child what is good. And in our case, it is the linear movement not the parabolic linear movement. So 10 signals of the linear movement, keeping the same uh, speed of the movement and keeping the same range as for the input data. So now I'm keeping, I'm ready for, for the movement. I'm taking my mouse by left hand and starting the learning and then immediately start the linear movement. And you can observe the counter. The bottom. And it will stop automatically. When 10 signals collected. OK, we just finish. Go to detection button is active so I can press this button. Then select once again from serial. And now this is really emulation stage, so the inferencing stage. So no need to define the number of the signals. We can just uh, inference continuously. So I'm starting the acquisition. 
and I need to be patient because the one signal it is 2.5 second. So my board is in static position and it reports abnormal behavior, 31% of the similarity here. When I start to move board in linear way, now I can observe 99% of the similarity. So the model, the algorithm reports the normal condition, normal behavior. Then when I switch to the parabolic movement, it reports abnormal condition. Exactly. Then when I come back to the linear movement, it is, it reports back the normal condition. In static, it reports uh, abnormal using some random movements. It also reports abnormal behavior. However, we didn't cover the abnormal movements within the input data set. So I can stop the emulation stage. If the child is not clever enough, it is possible to come back to the school by pressing reviews. And let's say now we can add additional five lessons. Okay. And once again, start emulator. So when linear movement. It reports normal condition and parabolic. It reports uh, abnormal. Okay, so at least on my side, I have expected behavior. So I'm in front of the really last step, the step number six, deployment. So deployment means generation of the library compilation of the library so i'm pressing the compile library button then selecting demo version you can save the library wherever you want so on the euro no, no edge i have empty folder so i'm saving my library closing and we are done with the Nano Edge Studio. We can go to the last slide and also it is possible to unzip the repository to see the structure. And accept the documentation within the library. You can see the most important file library itself and the header file containing the APIs. Regarding uh, API, it is very simple because the number of the of the header files is only five, while the three are most important ones. 
initialization of the resources, so allocation of the RAM, buffers to the library, then learning and detect what means inferencing during runtime. That's all. Then we have two APIs to set and get the sensitivity of the library and if the sensitivity default value is one, when the sensitivity is lower than one, the behavior is more calm, I would say, in front of the data stream perturbations. If it is higher than one, the model behaves more aggressive in front of perturbations. We can say it's more, more nervous. And that's all. We are done with the Nanoet Studio. Thank you.